Jean, let's bring you into the conversation and maybe kind of answer the question that both Steve and John have posed, which is, could NVIDIA's shortages, let's call them today, become gluts tomorrow? Or is there enough demand in the pipeline for, uh, you know, to justify these multiples and, and market cap for some time now? Well, I guess uh, you, you have, uh, there's this catch-22 whenever you hear about supply constraints. There's the question about how much demand was is being pulled forward. At the end of the day, I go back to the simple equation around accelerated computing. This is a theme that NVIDIA has been talking about for years. But I ultimately, based on our own research, believe that this is true, that there is a shift going on from CPUs to GPUs. CPUs do one thing exceptionally well. That's not what AI needs. It needs parallel computing that does smaller computations side by side. That's what GPUs do well. And so right now, NVIDIA has talked about 20% of the data centers, just the data centers, are now GPU-enabled. Eventually, that's going to be 60%, 80%. That, uh, um, that doesn't include cloud providers or some of the big uh, other hyperscalers uh, uh, like Azure and uh, Google Cloud and AWS. And so, uh, uh, Kelly, I think the answer is that uh, what we saw is now two quarters of enroll of exceptional fundamentals. I've been investing in tech for over 30 years, and what I've seen over the last two quarters is unlike anything I've ever uh, witnessed. And uh, that means that something bigger is going on. And ultimately, I think that uh, when I boil this all the way down to the pressure point, this comes down to what is NVIDIA's growth in calendar 25. That's what the market's thinking about today. The market's thinking it's going to be 20 percent. I'll take the over on it, and I think it will be comfortably over that 40 percent plus growth. So, Gene, is effectively, for all intents and purposes, is NVIDIA the only game in town? And how long, if it is true, what is their moat, and how long can they hang on to that primacy? It is the only game in town, and how long can they hold on to it? One of the reasons why is they also have a, a basically a modeling language that goes along with the chips. This is, think about uh, what Apple and Tesla have done so well, vertical integrations. This isn't just a chip company. There's effectively a coding language around it. And I think that that is one of the reasons why developers want to develop on NVIDIA GPUs. They're great, and they know how to develop on them. And then, uh, you know, how sustainable is this? You know, we talked about the what the curve is. As far as uh, what the disruption is, uh, we think that there could be some disruption. Uh, if we think three, five years out, Deepwater's invested in a company called Rain.ai. It's one of a handful of companies that are building next generation chips that uh, help to create what we think is 100 to 1,000 X uh, cost savings around energy with this. Mm -hmm. So eventually, uh, NVIDIA is going to have to uh, make that shift to more efficient chips because these current pricing environment isn't sustainable for five, 10 years down the road. There's going to be other competition that's going to come in.